Welcome to the channel and part four of the five video series for lighting automations. In today's video, we'll be going through adaptive lighting. This is lighting that adapts its temperature and brightness based on the elevation of the sun in the sky. This change in temperature and brightness based on the sun's elevation aligns and complements to circadian rhythms. Circadian rhythms are a 24 hour cycle that are part of the body's internal clock. They run in your subconscious to carry out essential functions and processes. One of the most important and well-known circadian rhythm is the sleep-wake cycle. Different systems of the body follow circadian rhythms that are synchronized with a biological clock in the brain. The internal clock is directly influenced by environmental cues, especially light, which is why circadian rhythms are tied to the cycle of day and night. When properly aligned through light cues, a circadian rhythm can promote consistent and restorative sleep. But when these circadian rhythms are thrown off, it can create significant sleep problems such as a restless night's sleep. Fortunately, from the home assistant community, namely Basnijolt, sorry if I pronounced the name wrong, has come to the rescue to help us all with our sleep. Thanks Badgerjolt for creating and continuing to improve his hacks integration for adaptive lighting. So let's see how Home Assistant can help us all have a good night's sleep. Let's dive in. So at the time of recording, I'm running on Home Assistant Core version 2023.11.1. Adaptive lighting is a custom component of Home Assistant that is available through the Home Assistant Community Store. Now you'll need hacks installed for this. If you don't have this, head over to my video available in the pop-up above or in the description below on how to do the installation for hacks. Once you've completed that, come back to this video. Now you have hacks installed, let's install adaptive lighting. Head over to hacks, into integrations, press the explore and download repositories, search for and select adaptive lighting. Press the download button and confirm with a download. Navigate back. You'll see that adaptive lighting requires a restart. So therefore head over to developer tools, check your configuration and press restart and confirm twice. Next we'll need to add the adaptive lighting integration. Navigate to settings, devices and services and add an integration. Search for and select adaptive lighting. Adaptive lighting will start the process for adding your first adaptive lighting group, which you will need to add at least one to be able to install the integration. Type in the name of your adaptive lighting group, in my case, Master Bedroom, and press Submit. Confirm with a Finish. Now we have the adaptive lighting group. We need to configure it. Select Adaptive Lighting Group in the integration screen. To the right of the adaptive group, press Configure. Using the Lights drop-down, select the lights or the lighting group that you wish to apply adaptive lighting to. In my case, we'll be selecting the master bedroom lamps, which comprises of two bedside lamps that are color capable. Note that at this point, you can also select lighting groups. Now adaptive lighting has many settings that we can control. The interval is the frequency to adapt the lights in seconds. Leave this at the default 60 seconds. Transition is the time between transition. The default of 45 seconds is very smooth, so no need to change that. Initial transition is the time in seconds for the first transition. I suggest you leave this at one second. Minimum brightness is the percentage and very much dependent upon our user case scenarios. For instance, in a bedroom, this might be 1%, but if you're using adaptive lighting in a kitchen, you might prefer to leave this at 25%, so you can still do things in the kitchen, even in the middle of the night. This is a good time to bring up the lights that you wish to use to control through adaptive lighting. If you are planning on controlling your bedroom lights, then I would suggest using good quality globes that can be controlled at very low light levels. The best for low level light level control are Philips Hue. But since this is a very controversial topic and one that can lock you into an ecosystem, I would avoid this. Next best I would suggest is LifeX, which offer fabulous smart globes. The issue here is that LifeX was in financial trouble recently and faced shutting down. However, thanks to a buyout by Fate Electrical, this has been avoided. Fate has committed to supporting the existing product base and bring out new products. I'll put the links in the description on this topic. The final suggestion I would have would be Govi Lights, a solid choice and a financially secure company, but they don't have the same low level light controls of Philips Hue or LifeX. Ultimately, the choice is yours. Try your current globes, and if they don't perform, 
then you can have some options. Links in the description that I would recommend. Next, we have the maximum brightness. This is a percentage, and again, very much dependent on the user case. For instance, if this is for an internal hallway, you might not want the brightness to go to full brightness, even in the middle of the day. Minimum color. This is a number between 1000 and 10,000, although there are no lights that I know of that actually reach these extremes. Regardless, I would set this to 2400K for a minimum, as this is a very soft orangey white. Maximum color is the opposite of minimum color, and although this is personal preference, I'd suggest using a value of 6000. All other variables are fine to be left as default, but you might like to adjust these based on your user case. For the list of full variables and descriptions with default values, you can check the adaptive lighting readme in the GitHub, link in the description below. Now scroll to the bottom and press the submit button. Finish, and we're finished. Our master bedroom lights are now controlled by adaptive lighting. You can add additional specific lights or groups of lights by pressing the add button and following the same process. Once created, the lights that you have selected for the adaptive lighting will have a color temperature and brightness controlled by the adaptive lighting integration when the light on service is called, as long as you don't specify the color and temperature. The changes in the brightness and color are very subtle, so you might not even notice the changes. But if you go into the developer tools and view the specific light and make a note of the RGB color, you'll see that these change over a period of an evening. This will continue to happen until you or another source, such as an automation, manually changes the light settings. When this occurs, adaptive lighting will not make any further adjustments until the light is turned off and back on or is reset using the adaptive lighting dot set underscore manual underscore control service call. Now, if you've added this to Home Assistant and happen to have Alexa integrated, you would have noticed that four new entities were added and probably received a notification for this. You can view these new entities in the adaptive lighting integration by pressing on the four entities under the adaptive lighting group. The first one, which is lighting, turns adaptive lighting on or off in the current view lighting settings through its attribute. The second one, lighting sleep mode, activates sleep mode and set custom sleep brightness and sleep color temperatures. The third one, light adaptive brightness, enables or disables the brightness adaptation for the supporting lights. The fourth one, lighting adapt color, enables or disables color adaptation for supporting lights. These can be set via a dashboard or via an automation if required. So strictly speaking, this is not a lighting automation as we have not created any automation for these lights. However, I think you'd agree that this is a pretty amazing application of adaptive lighting to support circadian rhythms and to help us all sleep better. Shout out again to Basna Jolt for this integration. And if you have any questions about adaptive lighting, then please let me you know in the comments below. So if you've enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing and ding in that bell to be notified when part five of the lighting automation series gets released. Until that time, happy automating and see you on the next one.